Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Joan and, uh, and the uh, luncheon committee for doing this. This is a great honor for our students and our student athletes. Uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing Melissa just for a relatively short time, and you might uh, ask the question, well, how did that happen? Um, I teach some of the upper level courses and don't necessarily get all of our students. We have a very large program. We have about 500 students in our program. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her background, her academic achievements, and then also about how I got to know her and a few things about her in terms of uh, how I would describe her. Uh, I could probably pass out her resume and you just go, wow. <laughs> she's really been very, very impressive in terms of some of the things she's done. But she's not only our female student athlete of the semester, she just recently received the highest award from our Department for Academic Excellence. Uh, and that was awarded last Thursday at the uh, Eisenberg Scholarship Award Dinner. Uh, it was a very nice event. Her parents were here. I got to know a little bit about her from her parents, which was even uh, wonderful too. And I thought that was very, very great. To, to get that award, she has to have the highest GPA in the department and also do very, very good things in terms of her academics, and she did. She has a 3.89 or 8.5, something like that, GPA. She got all A's every semester she's been here, uh, except for one B, I believe, I think, one B. Uh, she has been named to the honor roll every semester that she's been here, the Dean's Honor Roll. And she's been, I think, academic A-10 All-American, I believe. I think that's part of that, that too. So it's, it's very, very challenging and difficult to do that, but she's done a lot about it. And I'll, she'll probably say a few things about her academic achievements, too, in terms of what she got. But I also want to talk a little bit about the story of Melissa, because I got to know a little bit about her from her dad. And um, the story actually is a little bit about creativity and passion, I think, and I'm going to say a few things about that. I think, if I recall right, her dad said she didn't pick up lacrosse until fairly late in her career, I believe. She was playing soccer, basketball, and softball, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, volleyball. Volleyball. Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, I got some of the sports right anyway. Um, and I think one of the sports they said, well, why don't you try lacrosse? You didn't start it until when you were middle school or something like that? Freshman in high school. Freshman in high school to pick up this sport. And I can imagine her, her dad probably said to her, this is a sport for you because you like running around. It's fast. It's a great sport. And imagine the possibilities. Well, that was probably, what, five or six years ago? Ten years ago? Less than ten years ago, right? Yep. Less than ten years ago. Now she's a D1 athlete and she is Scholar Athlete of the Year. Imagine the possibilities. That's pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, so I often talk about students in terms of their journey, and this is kind of like another chapter in their lives. And um, this is ending one chapter, but starting another. How did I get to know her? Well, I got to know her by, no, it's Lance. Lance is here somewhere, isn't he? Where's Lance? Yeah. Lance actually helped place her over in the UMass uh, Alumni Association uh, Relations Department, where my wife, Deb, works, and also Diane Barstow works. And they kept telling me about this HTM student that I didn't know right away. And so uh, I'd heard about her, but I hadn't had her in class. So they said, you really got to get to know this person. You got to get to know her. She's really, really, really good. So finally, we connected up about a month or two ago. and. Um, uh, I'm primarily the person who deals with career day at, uh, in the department and also job placement for a lot of our students. So I got to know her that way and I had her come in, we looked at her resume, we talked about where she might want to work and uh, one of the things we talked about, what was her dream job because you need to think about imagining different things that you want to do in your life and she said, well I'd like to be an event planner and work in Madison Square Garden. If I, think that, I think that's right if I got it right. And so we talked a little bit about that. Um, and that very day, uh, one of our students came in whose dad actually works for a major hotel in New York City called Commune. Now, uh, Commune is a brand new lifestyle hotel that's uh, it's a spin off of Kimpton, and a couple of our alums have started this hotel. And they said, We just had a person turn down a job for a marketing, events, and sales person uh, position. And so I said, Ah, I got the right person, and I had just met Melissa the day before, I believe. And so I sent off her resume and a couple of things, and she has an interview 
Monday, I believe, with them. Yeah, okay, Monday, which is really, really good. We've also connected her with the event coordinator at Madison Square Garden, which happens to be one of our graduates, and also with Trump Organization, which has a student who is one of our graduates from our program. So she's had a lot of possibilities in the next couple of weeks, which are, are uh, I think, going to work out fairly, fairly well. Um, there were three words she was asked to describe herself about, and I think someone asked her this, and I got this in the emails that it was sent to me. Uh, the three words that describe her are adrenaline, family, and travel, I believe, if I got that right. Adrenaline, she likes to move and do things fast. Family, uh, if you've met her family, you know that that's the rock and foundation of who this person is, but she also has a very strong lacrosse family. She has an HTM family, and she'll pretty soon have an alumni family, which I think is really, really good. Uh, travel, this lady is going places. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> um, I think this is also a story about creativity and passion. I talked about creativity a little bit in the beginning there. Uh, creativity was probably when her dad said, imagine playing lacrosse and maybe playing lacrosse at a D1 level, and just imagine what you might be able to do. Well, certainly she's done this, and she's done it very, very well. She's made the most of her assets. She's a great player. I've seen her play. She plays with passion. She actually, I think, actually changed positions this year, and I think the coach will talk a little bit about that. Uh, she's used her assets of speed, teamwork, and overall aggressiveness to bring that team to a really, really high level. She plays with passion because I've seen her play. I've seen her talk and, and yell out uh, directions to her other team players. She studies with passion, and she's clear that she will work with passion down the road. So. This chapter in her life is not quite finished yet. She has A-10s, the finals uh, to complete, which I think she's almost done. Uh, she has the NCAAs, which they're going to make, I'm sure. And she has graduation and then placement. But it's been a very uh, proud moment for me to know her and to see how well she's done. And uh, she's gonna be an amazing person and have a great, great career. So uh, it's a great honor for her. There's no doubt that she will we'll hear a lot about her in the future. And I'm proud to see that she is a HTM graduate. So congratulations, Melissa. Well, thank you all for um, having us today and especially for um, honoring Melissa with this fantastic award. Um, I believe the last time we might have had one of our student athletes was um, two years ago. Um, Riley Perry um, was honored with this award. So we're glad that, you know, at least every few years we're getting a women's lacrosse player in there and, um, you know, just you know, even more honored that, you know, we have such dedicated um, student athletes in our program that work so hard to, to be receiving this um, award and we really appreciate it. So um, I think, you know, initially uh, I would love to stand up here and, and take all the credit for Melissa being here at the University of Massachusetts, but I can't. Um, I, at the time when she was being recruited, I was actually the head coach at the uh, school that is located in Storrs, Connecticut, to not be named. Um, but uh, so, and, and again, I, I think, you know, Melissa could probably talk a little bit more about her process as well, but, you know, being that she picked up the sport a little bit later, um, you know, she wasn't necessarily one of these highly touted recruits. Um, she was athletic, she had speed, but um, she sort of was somebody that flew under the radar a little bit um, and, you know, lucky for all of us that she was um, seen by the UMass coaching staff um, back, th back at that time and they obviously identified, um, which now we know, of, of some of her skills and her assets that uh, she brings athletically. Um, and, and obviously, of course, personality-wise is, is a huge aspect of the recruiting process. Um, whether it's me or whether it's another head coach, we always have to find um, the best fits. And the best fits, you know, is so many different things that you analyze and, and sort of in terms of some of the things that um, were the three, three things mentioned about Melissa are really the, the things that we analyze as, as coaches in terms of who we bring into our program is, uh, you know, who, uh, I think work work ethic. Um, you know, just your your character. Do you have good character? Are you a good person? Are you going to contribute not only to your 
um, you know, athletic team, but your uh, academic community and the community outside of, of academics. And then where are you coming from? You know, who, who is your, your family? What's the background? Because as I've seen more and more um, going through the years of recruiting is that um, a lot of times the students that we bring in here are really a reflection of their families and their parents at home. Um, so, you know, on, on all fronts, you know, Melissa is absolutely uh, someone that we are so happy to have landed here. And again, I think, you know, coming in as a freshman, she, she was just such a great athlete and she really was a, a diamond in the rough in terms of, you know, what her potential was. And that's something that's always very difficult as, as a coach to gauge um, somebody's potential. Um, because it's like you're rubbing a crystal ball and, and you think you know what ha is going to happen, but you don't always know, and, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But for, for Melissa, it absolutely has worked out, and then some, because she still has some more work to do. Um, but, you know, sh through her process, you know, coming in as a freshman where we had a lot of upper upperclassmen um, who had really uh, dominated sort of playing time since they were, they were very young, you know, she was finding her way of how she could work into um, getting playing time and being on the field and, and contributing. And with that, um, you know, one thing that you can control is your work ethic and your level of fitness. And that's something that Melissa has always held herself to a very um, high standard with is just her overall athleticism and fitness where you know each and every year you know we do these fitness tests when uh, usually it's when they come back in the fall and then when they return um, for preseason you know in in the winter what is supposed to be the spring but I'm still <laughs> waiting on that one um, is we so that's when we do our main sort of fitness evaluations and I could probably say without having it in front of me or, or even referring to it Melissa was probably in the top three of every single year, every semester of, of her, our fitness evaluations that we've done. Which, you know, it's very easy, when, especially because you go home for summer, where you're home for three months in the summer, and then you're home for six weeks over winter. To, to hold yourself to that same level as when you're leaving campus and having that every single day, that takes a lot of commitment, it takes a lot of motivation, and not, not everyone can do it. And I'll say that not everyone on our team can always do it. So, um, you know, I think that just says a lot about her and her personality of just, you know, how driven she is. Obviously, you know, so many things she does in her life, she's so driven and, and motivated in or else she wouldn't be here um, right now today. But, you know, it's, it's the little things that Melissa, I think, pays attention to that she understands that is going to pay dividends in the long run for whatever, whatever type of goal it is that she sets for herself. And, you know, because of that work ethic and motivation, she's, she's been achieving her goals, you know, where she wanted to get on the field. She worked really hard her freshman year, and she started getting, getting on the field more and contributing to the team as she, as she got more more playing time on the field she wanted to be a starter and after she became a starter she wanted to be an impact player and contribute in a big way and she's done that and first you know first it was for us um you know on the on the draw circle which you know it's sort of similar to men's lacrosse in that when you have the face-offs you're getting possession of the ball and obviously if you have possession of the ball it means that you can score more often and that's a, it, it, it's such a little thing and not always um, the most rewarded aspect is is being able to come up with the ball you think of the goals and assists and goalies making saves but I would say that for for our sport and what we do getting possession on a draw is probably the number one factor and most important thing that we do in our sport. And Melissa found a knack for that and no, knew that that was a way that she could contribute to our team in a big way. And she took that role on and she took it on happily. And, um, you know, it directly contributed to our success in the past few years. And, and especially this year, um, where not only is she getting that ball for, for us on the draw, but now she's increased her role in, in setting another goal for herself and being a, a primary goal scorer for us. Um, she has always played midfield. 
um, up until about halfway through this season. And, you know, as we were looking um, at our positions and, and ways that we could potentially improve ourselves as a team, we decided to move her to attack. And it's something that I think she's been really thriving in. Um, where you know she she can be on the field all the time because we rotate our our midfielders because they have to play offense and defense. That there are some people that we need on the field at all times, and Melissa became one of those people um, because of her hard work and dedication and and her desire to to help this team um, achieve our ultimate goals of con, you know continuing to win. Um, so again, you know. A lot of our success is directly attributed to the, the little things that Melissa does, and she really does absolutely embody everything that our program and I think UMass Athletics is about, that you know, you're a good person often on the field and you work ha extremely hard. And that is absolutely something that you know, I'm, I'm so proud of Melissa and everything that she's done and accomplished um, throughout her career. And like I said, I'm very confident that she's gonna step up in a big way you know, maybe even Friday or Sunday would be nice. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if, if there's anyone that I could say that to, it's Melissa because she thrives in that role of, of wanting to contribute. And, and I think the, the greatest thing that I've seen Melissa in terms of off the field is just her overall confidence um, and, and maturity that she has now um, come to at this point in her career that I can, you know, confidently say that she's going to go out and, you know, whoever is lucky enough to offer her a job and, and land her, she's going to do amazing things for whatever company she's working for um, because she is, is confident, she has a great personality, she works extremely hard, and, and there's nobody better. I, I really don't think that that could represent their company as well as Melissa could. Um, so, you know, just seeing her progress, we're, we're extremely proud of her and are looking forward to her contributing hopefully this weekend um, with A-10. So congratulations, Melissa. It's a well-deserved honor and we're really happy for you. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, first off, thank you, Ange and Rod, for those wonderful speeches. It really filled my heart, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Um, Thank you for having me here today. I'm very honored to have been selected. It's probably one of my favorite moments of being at UMass. So I wrote a little bit. I'm going to tell you what I said. I don't know. OK. Um, so I was asked to come up here and speak a little bit about my experience as a student athlete at UMass. The first thing that popped into my head was about four years ago as a senior in high school when I first committed to UMass as a women's lacrosse player. I remember being nervous about the numerous challenges that lied ahead. I also remember being fi so fixated on things such as getting in shape for the run test, which Ange talked about, how my dorm room would look, um, and how I was going to make friends. Things like my career, my academics, all the actually integral pieces to my future successes, I pushed to the side like a typical teenager. After months of building anticipation, I arrived here to a campus beaming with school spirit and thousands of friendly faces, ready to start one of the biggest adventures of our lives. I quickly found myself surrounded by overachievers on and off the field. There was always a hint of co friendly competition, whether it be when we were running sprints at the beginning of practice or when my statistics teacher would throw us off with a pop quiz. I never realized that in these moments, a lot more was happening than a simple quiz or sprint. My character was being shaped. UMass was pushing me to be the best in every aspect of the word. The school was teaching me to excel in my academics as well as my athletics and to actually enjoy my time here, which I did. For my academics, I was fortunate enough to have been admitted to the very prestigious Eisenberg School of Management. While many of my classes proved difficult, I thoroughly enjoyed them all. Eisenberg has turned me into someone who truly has a passion for learning. The hospitality program has prepared me fully for my future endeavors and I cannot wait to get out in the field. My experience on the women's lacrosse team has unequivocally been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I've learned discipline, hard work, and time management, concepts that many people don't get the pleasure of genuinely learning. My coach, my team, and the game itself has given me moments I will cherish for the rest of my life. I really do mean that. Everyone talks about sacrifice as a, co as a collegiate athlete. There's academics, athletics, and a social life, and you can only truly pick two. Well, here at UMass, that didn't hold true. While I've had, to hard, I've had to work hard, I've also gotten to enjoy my time. 
whether it was going to a football game, a basketball game, or even going to the first annual semis, Sammies a couple of days ago, um, I've, I've, well, I've had the time of my life. All these ideals were instilled through every relationship I have had here. I've had professors nothing short of the best. I've, I've had coaches who have become mentors to me that I can rely on for anything. I've had teammates who have truly become my sisters and various other faculty members who have steered me in, in only the right direction. So to all those people, thank you for contributing so largely to the person I am today. There aren't enough words to express my gratitude, and thank you again for having me here today.